patriarch and elder, I wish to warmly thank all of my relatives amongst the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, and the Musqueam for welcoming me to live on the Musqueam ancestral lands for close to 40 years now. As Coast Salish matriarch and elder, I wish to warmly welcome each and every one of you to our traditional, ancestral, unceded, and occupied lands of our Coast Salish relatives, the Squamish, the Musqueam, and the Tsleil-Waututh. Ceremony. Ceremony guided each and every step of each and every day of our lives as taught to me by my elders. I have in my hand some cedar boughs as taught to me by my elders. We would pick those cedar boughs each and every morning. We would go into that cold, cold water. What we are doing is ceremony. We are brushing every single part of our bodies off with those cedar boughs. What we are doing is a cleansing. We are pushing all the negative and evil energy off of us so we could go about our day in a good and respectful way. I've been going into classrooms here in the Lower Mainland for 32 years now. I am in presently five school districts in the Lower Mainland talking about First Nations. I'll share the exercise with each and every one of you today that I share in those classrooms right from preschool up into university to share the meaning of negative energy and I'll ask you to participate with me. Raise your hand, folks, if you've ever felt a cranky moment in your life. <laughs> Feel free to raise two. <laughs> that, my dear friends, is the meaning of negative energy. Can you do things really well when you are cranky? Not really, no. uh -uh. Maybe extra hard, maybe extra fast, but not really well. So brushing all that negative energy off of you so you can go about your day in a good and respectful way. Part of the power of the sacred cedar boughs when you use them in ceremony puts a protective force around you that will constantly deflect that negative energy off of you as you go about your day. Other important ceremony is taught to me by my elders is the ceremony of introduction to share your name, your nation, your family. And if it isn't your traditional territory, as I've mentioned earlier, to always respectfully ask permission to be on that territory. I'll share that with you now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Roberta Price. My heritage is I am Coast Salish. I am Snanemo on my dad's side, and that's where I was born. When they came to our lands, they couldn't say our names. They couldn't say our language. So perhaps when they couldn't say Snanemo, they called it Nanaimo. So I was born there right on the number one reserve, right on the waterfront in Nanaimo. And I am Cowichan on my mom's side. The dialect of the language of my people is taught to me by my elders on this side of the water. The language of my people is called the Halkamilum language. I knew and understood and spoke my language fluently until I was six years old. Beyond six years old, I was not allowed to have anything to do with my language, my heritage, and my culture. And I was actually tortured about that. I have spent well over 40 years reclaiming back my identity, searching out for my family and especially searching for my mother. Very, very pleased and proud to finally find my mom when I became a grandmom in 1994. I was able to spend eight years with my mother before she passed away. My mother affirming all the teachings of all the elders that I worked with leading up to my mom. I felt they were stepping stones to meeting my mom. And I share with you that due to those horrific experiences from age six onwards, for many, many, many years, I used a contemporary Western method of healing, counseling in psychiatry and psychology. But I really felt the greatest part of my healing journey came. I call this dear lady a friend today. My dear friend Flo is 82 this year. My dear friend Flo was my boss in the early 80s. My dear friend Flo spent her entire life in the residential school. 
My dear friend Flo was also helper to the elders. She knew what I needed. She brought me to those elders. Those elders, they took me under their wing. They taught me, they guided me, they prayed for me. But mostly importantly of all, what those elders did for me is they loved me. They loved me unconditionally, unconditionally. Because when you are ripped away from your family, age three, four, five, six, and older, what you are missing is that unconditional love you receive from your parents, your grandparents, your family, your nation, your community, that unconditional love. They gave it to me lovingly. They gave it to me openly. Not for one moment at that time did I ever dream that close to 40 years later, I would be walking in those elders' footsteps today, sharing that same unconditional love with so many in so many communities. We still need it. We still need it very, very much. I hold my hands up to those elders. I give thanks and prayers every morning and every night. I wanna share with you just as elder, I see things and I know things today. Those elders, they knew who I was. But I had to find out who I am. I'm very, very proud to share with each and every one of you today. In the year 2018, I know who I am. And I hold my hands up high to those elders. I give thanks every single day. And I wanna share with you that personally, as I share out there many times, personally, I feel that Canada has lost a national treasure. And I'm not talking about money. We are losing our elders, our language speakers, our storytellers, our knowledge keepers by the day right across this nation. Amongst my relatives in the Musqueam alone, we have lost eight since Christmas time. And I really, really feel that we've lost a treasure. I truly feel blessed that I had the blessings of close to 30 elders in my journey. As elder at BC Women and Children's Hospital, I go into those wards. As elder with the Aboriginal Patient Navigator Program, uh, I go into all the other hospitals in the Lower Mainland and I visit patients especially in our mental wellness ward and I share my journey with them and lift their spirit, lift their emotion. Sometimes I get a smile, sometimes I get a laugh when I say, hey, Elder Roberta was a pretty hard nut to crack. 30 <laughs> elders, they never ever gave up on me, never. Just like I'm not gonna give up on you. And I, I really, really honor those elders. So I'd like to share the teachings of uh, one of my mentor elders. I worked with Elder Vince Stogan for many, many years from the Musqueam First Nations. Elder Bob George from the Slaywit Tooth on the North Shore, they used to call the Burrard. I worked with them many, many years amongst the 30 elders that I work with. I'll share Elder Vince's teachings and I'll call you each out of your comfort zone after I share the teachings to join me to honor the Coast Salish ways. So Elder Vince and Elder Bob and many other elders, they share that whenever we come together, we must share a blessing and a prayer to cover our thoughts, to cover our words, to cover our interactions. In that blessing and the prayer, Elder Vince's teachings are that we would be joining hands. When we join those hands, what we do is we put our left palm up to our person on our left. That left palm up is to Father Sky. We put our right palm down to our person on our right. That right palm down is to Mother Earth. His other teachings are that our left palm up is to the ancestors. We're calling upon and calling down in the prayers to be amongst us as we work, play, interact. Our right palm down is to our children, our grandchildren, and our great grandchildren. When we join hands in that way, we're keeping the connections very, very strong. 
So now I'll ask you to stand up and around your table. 